and good Monday, September 20th, 2010. What a weekend. From casual Friday to Yom Kippur, to talk like a pirate day to today's National Farm Safety Day. Busy times. Well, it was bound to happen. China is taking over the world. According to billionaire investor George Soros, China is the foremost economic superpower of the world, and the US isn't. The US is consuming way more than it's producing. China is producing way more than it's consuming. And if China were to allow its currency to be publicly traded, it would displace the US dollar as the world's de facto currency. With regards specifically to trade between the two countries, as you can see here in red, China is sending quite a bit of stuff to the US, whereas in blue you can see China is not buying all that much. What does America got that China does not? Rock and roll and Hollywood, baby. But they can just copy those things, which leads me to type. Mentions for China's effect on the internet in the last year show something is missing. US President Obama met with the leaders of Egypt, Israel, Palestine and Jordan for a round of peace talks in Washington last Wednesday, and the Associated Press snapped this press photo. But when the image appeared in Egypt's state-run newspaper Al Aran, the photo was edited to this, placing Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak in front of the group ahead of Obama. I get that state-run media has a long history of creating false propaganda, but come on now, we have the internet. Yep. Anyway. Considered to be one of the most complex, ongoing conflicts in the world, peace talks are happening and there is some hope. The Palestinians are divided by the political party Hamas and have a lot to gain from cooperating, for they are currently unable to operate without Western assistance. Meanwhile, Israel has become isolated and would also have a difficult time without Western support. In international pancake news, the International House of Pancakes filed a lawsuit against the International House of Prayer, claiming that the religious organization is illegally using the IHOP acronym to ride on the coattails of success. Sorry, Rev, but you ain't got no pancake mix. Well, that's what she said, said the Rev. We don't have any pancake mix. While lawyers for the famous Pancake House may be upset that IHOP Kansas City is rivaling the famous Pancakes acronym and even nearing wins with search returns, because the industries are so clearly separate, IHOP Kansas City should rest easy. This is a non-threat. Is Facebook building a phone? I don't know, but there is some compelling data put out by TechCrunch. If Facebook does come out with a phone, it will need to be different than the peak. It should A, have a phone, and B, do more than just Facebook. But let's face it, it probably will. Is a ballet that begins in a bathtub beautiful? I don't know, but that's what some are saying about the Scottish Ballet's Geometry and Grace, which premieres this month in Glasgow. The New York City Ballet is also taking radical steps to innovate in these changing times, having their ballerina actually speak to the audience. <gasps> How many memes does it take to make a meme overload? I don't know, one. One meme is one thing, and two memes are two. But how many is enough? And when is enough enough? Three? Four? More? Three is the fourth open meandric number. Four is the smallest composite number. Maybe five? A perfect fifth is the most consonant harmony. Six is the smallest perfect number. Seven? Seven is the only dimension besides the familiar three in which a vector cross product can be defined. And if it's eight, well, maybe it's eight because eight is a Fibonacci number. Being three plus five, the next Fibonacci number will be 13.